Okay, write down. <coughs> Don't write anything on here. Just use a separate piece, a piece of paper. Okay. Since Jesus is God, he should not have any human age. He should not have any human age. But in his incarnation to humanity, he had received human age when he was 31 years old. Uh, he had a chance to talk to Jewish leaders. He was telling Jewish leaders that Abraham, he, said, he told them, Abraham was with me. Let me repeat again. He was telling, the, telling to the Jewish leaders that Abraham was with me. Abraham is what, about 2000 Abraham was born in BC. Now here Jesus, now he was saying in this moment, he said, I had a good time with this Abraham. Abraham was considered to Jewish leaders as their national father. <laughs> national father. When Jewish leaders heard about Jesus' comment, they were very upset. They replied back to him by saying, you are, you are not even the 50 years old. You are not even 50 years old man. 50, 50 years, beginning 50 years, that's the senior's age at the time, okay? You're such a young man, you must be mentally sick. Hmm? How could you say such a such a what? Hmm? Such a hmm? such a crazy crazy thought that you have you had spent time together with Abraham. Listen to his leaders. Truly I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am, he said. I am, that's present tense. In John chapter 8, verses 55 through 58. Open your Bible and you highlight that, highlight your Bible. It says what? And you have not come to know him, but I know him. If I, if I say that, I do not know him. Verse 56, everybody. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. This means he spent time with who? Abraham. And 57, Jews therefore said to him, You are not yet how many old? 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? It was very curious for them, right? And he replied back to, said to them, Surely I say to you, 
before Abraham was born, I am. Okay, I am means eternal, always present tense. Okay? Always present tense means what? Eternity. I am, I am the eternal being. Temporary, I am here and taking human ages. But I am not, I am not a creature, I am a creator. Temporary, for your sake, because my name is Jehovah. What do you mean by Jehovah? Okay, I made a covenant with your people, that's why I am here. In flesh. Can you see that dynamics here? Later, later, <coughs> uh, on Tuesday, Tuesday of his, on Tuesday of his crucifixion week, he told Jewish leaders again that during the Old Testament time, during the Old Testament time, Jesus was saying that he had sent to the Israelite leaders and high priests to repent their sins. The sins of idol worshipping. However, your Israel leaders and high priests did not obey the prophets' warnings against against God's God's word. However, Jesus was telling them that I gave you guys compassion, my compassion, protecting your people like hen, like a hen, you know hen, H-E-N, a mother chicken, okay, like a hen embraces. Hen embraces her what? Her chicks. Her chicks. In Matthew 23, verse 37. Here, here Jesus was saying to them that 33 years old man was telling that he sent <clears throat> all these prophets. He's telling them, he sent all these prophets, starting here. It's prophets, it's Samuel, which is a BC 10, BC 1000 here. Okay? Samuel, Nathan, here, Eliza, here, Job, Eliza, Joel. Elisha, okay, and also Isaiah, all the way I gave you all the, until the Malachi, okay. Jesus now, he's a 33 years old man here. This is, he was 33 years old man. He was telling his leaders, say, listen, from thousand years, from thousand years here, King David time, from here, all the way, the Malachi, even John the Baptist is the last prophet. Okay? Who sent these guys? Jesus said, I sent all these prophets. Through, through whom this prophet gave the Israelites warning. Right? Not to Worship idols. So, but I have forgiven you guys sin to deal with disobedient 
Israelites. At the time, his name was not Jesus. Also, he visited them in various forms, in, 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 in various, in different forms, such as in human forms, sometimes in angel of, angel of God, angelic forms, temporarily, not for 30 years or 33 years, just for, say, one day or one week, his, his place. So it's a temporal incarnation to perform, to fulfill his objectives. But in the New Testament time, he came to this world with the name of what? Name of Jesus for how many years? 33 years. During the Old Testament time, during the Old Testament time, Jesus had many different names. Depending on the situation and circumstances. Such as Jehovah God and God Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Rapha and Emmanuel and Alpha and Omega and Shield, 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 Refugee. And fortress. Hmm? And what else? There are many, many different names. I will give you names later, n next time. Change the paragraph. When John, when John was in exile in Patmos, in Patmos, you know Patmos, huh? Eh? When he was in exile in Patmos, Jesus appeared to him. Jesus appeared to him, telling John that my name is Alpha and Omega in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. You open your Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, and highlight that Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus was telling him that, I am the Alpha and Omega, says, and the Lord God. You have the Lord God in your Bible? What is the Lord? Lord, now in the New Testament translate. Jehovah will translate into the Lord. Okay? You write them down. The Lord in the New Testament man, is the Jehovah in the Old Testament. So the Lord God means what? Jehovah God. Meaning? That means what? Covenantal God and God means what? Creator God. So now we've got now, Jesus' name here, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, okay? And I am the Jehovah God, covenantal and creator God. You see that? And later, in chapter 22, Revelation, write down again. 
Later in chapter 22, in Revelation, everybody open and find out what verse. In verses 12 and 12, 13. Chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. Now you underline that and then we will make a copy of them. In verse 12 it says, John, I will come soon. He said, right? In verse 12, that's the end of the end of the Bible here. I will, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to render, to give everyone accordingly to what they have done. And verse 13, I am the Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. Yeah, highlight that part. So clearly, Jesus' name is Alpha and Omega. Omega. Amen? Amen? What do you mean by Alpha and Omega? Beginning to the end. What do you mean by beginning? He, he has begun human history. Okay? Write it down. And he will be an ender of human history. Write it down. Alpha means he is the beginner of, initiator of the human history. And the ender of human history. That's why we honor him. That's why we respect him. That's why we worship him. Because we are in his hand. Huh? You and me are in his hand. Now also, in your individual life, he is the beginner of your life. He gave you He conceived you in your mother's womb. Right? He's a creator. So, his creation power was in your mother's womb. Beginning of your life. Then, in his pre-described, pre-planned time, you will die. So he is Alpha and Omega in my life and your life. That's why we depend on him, we worship him, we obey him. The name Alpha and Omega, write down again. The name Alpha and Omega was in the Old Testament. Not only in the New Testament. In Isaiah 44, verse 6, that Alpha and Omega with the name, say, Almighty Jehovah God appeared to Isaiah. Would you open that Isaiah 44, verse 6? Would you copy down that part here? Thus says the Lord. Everybody open your Bible? Okay. Now here, there are many different names of Jesus appears here. Okay? Now, everybody? Now let me read it. Thus says, the Lord, the Lord, means who is the Lord? Jesus. What do you mean by the Lord? Jehovah, right? And what do you mean by this? Blood, blood. Okay? Yeah, crucifixion of Jesus. Inside of the Lord. Okay? The Lord and the King of what? Israel. Israel. That's the name of Jesus again. The King of Israel and 
He is what? Redeemer. That's only, you see the all has a capital letter all there in your Bible? That's a Redeemer. That's Jesus again. And the Lord of hosts. What do you mean by the Lord of hosts? Host to me, Lord of, you, your Bible say Almighty? Okay. That's the, uh, the host, meaning the group of angels. Huge group of angels. Okay. He is also the Lord of the angels. And he said, I am what? I am the first and the last. So who is that? Who is that God? That's Jesus. Okay. Now, this means Jesus was appearing. He was appearing to whom? Isaiah. Isaiah, right? How many years ago from Jesus' time? Around 700 years ago. From Jesus' time. Jesus was telling, telling Jewish leaders that I sent what? Prophet. At the time, there was no name Jesus, but in different names. Here, Alpha and Omega, Jehovah God, Redeemer, Almighty, all these names. He appeared to? Yeah, Jewish leaders and prophets. Change the paragraph again. <clears throat> How about to Moses here? How about to Moses? Change, write that down. Of course, Jesus appeared to Moses too. In the name of Jehovah God, And God and the angel of the Lord. Hebrew chapter 11 verses 24 to 26. Chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 verses what? 24 and 26. Would you read that on first? Then I will explain you. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, you can highlight that part too later. Now, verse 24, 25, 26 say that. <coughs> By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure of the Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. No, this means this. Simply, when he was a son, he was a son of the daughter of Pharaoh, okay? Jesus appeared to him that, Moses, I'm going to give you a reward. Why don't you leave this palace? You go to the wilderness. You will be ill-treated there, okay? But I will give you a reward later in heaven. He said, Jesus, he said, uh, Moses, by faith, Faith is what? Faith is the hearing the word of God. Right? By faith, he left the king Pharaoh's palace. Now you understand? But he said, he said here, verse 20, 26 said, Who was telling him? Who promised him the great reward? He said, Jesus. Jesus promised me him. Jesus promised Moses that I will give you high reward. 
But at the time, at the time, Jesus, when Jesus met Moses, his name was not Jesus. His name was Jehovah God, Jehovah, and the angel of the Lord. In Exodus chapter 1 through 3. Exodus chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. And all the way, chapter 4, 5, 6, Exodus. Let's look at Exodus. Look at Exodus chapter 3. Now, Exodus chapter 2 and 4, 23, 24. You have just highlighted the, in his name there. Chapter 2, verse 24. What name is there? Chapter, 20, chapter 2, verse 24. You have the name God there? Eh? Yeah, it's underlined, highlighted God. God, in the name of God, appears. And how about 25? Verse 25. God saw. So sent here God, okay? And chapter 3. That's the calling of Moses. And verse 2. Who is it? The angel of the Lord appeared to him. So highlight the, the angel of the Lord. It looks like a, he appeared in a form of what? Angelic form. Angelic form, okay? And now, verse 4, he says what? The Lord now, the angel of the Lord now changed the name to the Lord. Okay? Highlight the Lord. And verse 4 again, the Lord saw that he turned, he turned aside to look. God called him. See over here, God, here, different name here. The Lord and say, and then God. God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place of which you are standing is holy ground. And then he said, Verse 6, I am the God of your father, and God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he got, he, Jesus has all different names. I am the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. All different names. But this God, this Jesus, gave promise, gave him the promise that I will give you Great reward. Where it says so? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. So I'm telling you this. Jesus. Jesus is here. Pre-existence of Jesus. That was the title that I gave you. Jesus pre-existed. Not only this time, he pre-existed during the Old Testament times. Okay? Not, all, not even this time here. He pre-existed even the before creation. Right? Now write that down. Jesus even existed before the creation. Why? Because he created. He created heavens and earth. In Genesis 1.1. When Jesus... 
finished the last supper the last supper when he finished his last supper one day before his crucifixion he pray he pray to father god <coughs> he pray to the father god saying this saying that father god you and i father god you and i together enjoy the glory even before the creation i want to be glorified again i want to i want to receive the same glory that you and i had before the creation together because jesus was temporarily incarnated into human form he lost that glory okay now he say i want to retake that the glory father god that we used to have together before the creation that was his prayer in john chapter 17 verse 5 in john chapter 17 verse 5 this means jesus jesus existed before the creation of this world because he was a creator in john chapter 1 verse 3 said says what john chapter 1 verse 3 says you go back to john chapter 1 verse 3 what is it all things came into being by him by jesus okay and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being so actually jesus is the creator of all things heavens and earth and anything that within that he told Isaiah about his creation he told Isaiah about his creation in Isaiah 45:12 in Isaiah 45:12 open your bible you can read beginning with the previous verse verse 11 verse 11 he said thou says the lord the holy one of israel and his maker ask me about the thing who is me isaiah okay ask me no not isaiah ask me about the things to come concerning my sons and you shall commit to me the work of my hands jesus i was saying in verse 12 it is i who made the earth and created man upon it i stretched out heavens with my hands and i ordained all their host even ordained host means angels okay so now jesus was saying this i created all things in this heavens even including including angels he he was telling to who isaiah okay now change the paragraph again 
he was telling to Moses, first in Genesis 1.1. Genesis 1.1 is what? God created heavens and earth. And then he explained whole six days creation stories to Moses. Six days creation stories to Moses. And also later, after Jesus gave Moses the Ten Commandments, after Jesus gave Moses the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, he continued to say that his, his creatorship. So let's look at chapter 20, Exodus. Verse 11. You can copy down that. Chapter 20, verse 11. For in six days, the Lord Jesus okay, made the heavens and earth, the sea, all that is in them, all the fishes, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So the Lord is what? Jesus. And he also, God also told King David in Psalm chapter 8. Verse 3. Psalm chapter 8, verse 3. Just you copy down the word of God later, okay, from your Bible. And Psalm chapter 8, verse 3. Psalm chapter 8, verse 3 says, When I consider your heavens, it's the heavens, the first and second heavens, the work of thy fingers, Jesus created the heavens, zillion, zillion, zillion stars, okay? With what? With his fingers. He also told Paul. In Colossians chapter 1, 16. Colossians chapter 116. This is a very famous the Bible verse. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For by him all things were created. By him. Who is him? Jesus. Okay? both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether even thrones, dominions, or the, these are the, these are the uh, uh, angels, okay? Angels, the angels' names, your thrones and dominions, or rulers, or authorities, all the angels. All things have been created by him, and for him. That's very, very important part here. These creatures, all created by whom? By Jesus. Not only by Jesus, for Jesus. Write it down. For Jesus. That is a purpose of, purpose of creation. For Jesus. It is for his glory. Romans 9.5 For his glory. Romans 9.5, okay? And it is for his praise and worship. 
Isaiah 43, 7. For his glory, for his worship and praise. That's why we are worshiping Jesus, who is creator. Isn't it clear? Huh? Jesus is not only the creator, but also is a controller of this universe. Manager, controller, sustainer. You know sustainer? Maintenance. He sustains, he holds this universe. He manages, controls, and what? Sustain. Maintenance. Okay, maintain. Psalm chapter 103, verse 19. The magnitude of Jesus, the magnitude means it's size, okay? It's a size, a magnitude. Magnitude means his size. How big, how big the size of Jesus? So majestic, so big, so splendor, so big. His chair, his throne, size of his throne is a universe. Okay? The size of his throne is, say, his universe. He, his, his throne is so big, you know, zillion, zillion stars, huge universe. That he's, he sits on the throne. That, that's a huge throne. And he's, you know, when you sit in the throne, it's a footstool. Footstool means you, lay, you, you just uh, rest your foot on, you know, on, on the chair. Yeah, you know, that, that we call it, Bible says footstool. Footstool, S. Stool means S-T-O-O-L. <laughs> Bible said, this land, this earth, this global, it's, it's planet earth, which is where we live here. This earth is his footstool. <laughs> so his chair is so big, universe, and this planet earth where we're living, it's footstool, his footstool. Isaiah 66 verse 1 said, Isaiah saw that. Isaiah saw the magnitude, the size of Jesus. Okay? This huge Jesus squeezed himself into human form and telling us that, hey, I am your friend. Can you see his love? You squeeze yourself into ants, into an ant. You tell, hey, you guys, I am your friend. Can you do that? And these ants will come to you, say, he will bite, bite you, bite you. He will put you in, put you there, Calvary, okay, and nail you down on the cross. Can you imagine? Paul saw that too. Write it down. Paul saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians 1, 22. Hebrews 2, 8. 1 Corinthians 15, 27. He said, Whole universe is under his feet. Whole universe is what? Under his feet. 
And this whole universe is obeying the Lord Jesus Christ. Even King David saw that in Psalm verse 86. Psalm chapter 86. Psalm chapter 8 verse 6. So creation, creation purpose is to praise Jesus Christ. That's why in King David saw all the creatures are praising, worshipping Jesus. In Psalm chapter 65 verses 12 through 13. He saw and I'll give you one more Psalm chapter 96 Verses 11 through 12. He saw all the universe's stars. Stars are dancing. And not only dancing, they are singing. He saw oceans. Waving is a dancing and singing, glorifying Jesus. He saw all kinds of fishes inside of ocean, dancing, praising, worshiping Jesus. And he saw mountains dancing. Trees are dancing and crying out, worshipping Jesus. And he saw all the animals in this world worshipping the reason is he said in Psalm Chapter 148, verse 5 said, Reason is, the Lord Jesus is a creature, creator. Because Jesus is creator, all these creatures are praising and worshipping Jesus. Psalm chapter 148, verse 5. Even Psalm 148, verse 6 through verse 8. Let's look at it. Verse 8 says, verse 8 through verse 14. Verse 8 through verse 14. Chapter 148, Psalm. Psalm 148 is very beautiful psalm. Whole psalm, whole chapter is talking about this. I don't have time, you just to read it. In starting verse 8 said, Fires and hails and snow and clouds, storms, all mountains, hills, fruit trees, all cedar trees, beasts, all cattle, clipping things, winged fowl, kings of this earth and people, princes and judges, all young and old and virgins, every creature are praising Jesus. Why? Because he is creator. So we are we are. We are created for what? For praising our creator. 
That's why we dance, we worship, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's why many musicians, composers, Christian composers, they composed music through their spiritual eyes open, spiritual ears open. They, they saw, they heard dancings, rivers are dancings, eh? and, and, and forests, trees are dancings and singing, praising, and stars and moons and suns, all praising and dancing. They heard. That's why they composed. So from now on, when you are in everywhere, people are singing and dancing. Ants are now busy with their food, but they are dancing and praising creatures. Everything, everything. Oceans, fishes. Now, one more, con my conclusion here. As you, as you worship, praise, honor, creator, okay, creator, then God will give you blessings. He will give you blessings. All kinds of blessings, heavenly blessings and earthly blessings. Even today, you know, in Revelation chapter 4, John saw that. 24 elders and all the angelic forces, now even now, praising and worshiping the Lord Jesus there in heaven. When we are in, where? In the wedding feast, okay? During the seven-year tribulation, when we raptured up to the wedding feast in the future, John saw that in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, 10, 11. John saw that well in advance. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 9, 10, 11. He saw many, many Christians representing different tribal background, language their background, cultural background, racial background, all get gathered together and praising and worshiping and honoring the Lord Jesus. You know this story. Why? Because he is creator. As we practice this Worshipping, okay, our Lord Jesus, then we will be, we will be comfortable when we are in heaven. But there are, there are, there are many Christians who haven't practiced this on earth, then they will feel very strange in heaven. As you practice here, then you will receive more blessings from him and your position in heaven will be higher in heavenly society. So that's our mandate, okay? We should, we should every day honor, worship, worship and praise our Lord Jesus every day. This is my end of my second lecture this morning. And I will give you more on Tuesday. First day I gave you a lecture about the Bible. Try to memorize all this. I try to give you the basic fundamental the, uh, doctrines on Christianity. Basic stuff. About the Bibles. Now about today is about, about about the Trinity God and Jesus. I'll give you more. So try to memorize this and teach people. Okay?
Okay, let's pray. Thank you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for your teachings. Let these all biblical informations be our meditation and our memory, our practice for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to hear the gospel in my language. Yes, I'm so keen to get out of here. Christy, we are not going to get back to the house. We are not going to get back to the house. We are not going to get back to the house.